I just wanted to give you information about Juan Diego. He was born in 1474 in the district of Coatlitlan. Today is part of Mexico City. He was a member of the Chichimeca people, one of the more advanced groups, living in the Anahuac Valley. He was a farmer, very spiritual. Um, this is even before his conversion to the Catholic faith, in which, of course, um, in his native tongue, Noatul, Noatul was Quetzalcoatlan, the eagle who speaks. He changed it to Juan Diego when he was baptized at age 50. The story of Juan Diego's encounter with Our Lady of Guadalupe was recorded in 1545. And um, basically, to give you a story, it was to have when he was 57. He was recently widowed. His first apparition um, began when he was 57. It was his custom on Saturdays and Sundays to walk nine miles each way to attend Mass and to receive instruction in the, ma the faith from the Franciscan fire friars. Um, it was on December 9, 1531, just before dawn, that he heard a woman singing. So he went and climbed the top of the hill to see who it was that was singing the most delightful song. And he found, of course, Our Lady, and she was brilliant and she had a sash around her waist, which meant she was pregnant. She was a young brown-skinned woman, dressed in indigenous clothes. She wanted she was dressed like the people of her of the of that day. Um, and she, her garments were shining like the sun. Um, Juan Diego bowed before her, and she spoke to him in his native language. She said, I am Mary, mother of the true God for whom we live. She instructed him to inform Don Fray Juan de Zamoraga, the Bishop of Mexico, to build a temple, or a little house, as she called it. She said, Here I will give all my love, my help, and my protection to the, to the people. I am your compassionate mother, and I am the mother of all the people who live as one in this land, and of all the people of different ancestries who cry to me, who seek me, who trust me. Well, all in all, Juan Diego went twice to the bishop, and on both times he wanted more proof about Juan Diego's encounter with Our Lady because he didn't believe that he he was actually receiving apparitions. So Mary tells him on the second try um, to tell him again that I am I in person, the ever virgin Holy Mary, Mother of God, sent you. Well, on the second try, the bishop wanted a sign. So, uh, Juan Diego goes on December 12th, um, and of course, something happen with it, happens with his uncle, who's sick, so he decides to go a different way. And on, and on encountering Our Lady, um, Our Lady comes and she meets him, and he apologizes to her that he wanted to go a different way because his uncle was sick. So she tells him, Hear me and understand well, my little son. Nothing should frighten or grieve you. Let not your heart be disturbed. Do not be afflicted by the illness of your uncle. He will not die now of it. Be assured he is cured. She instructed Juan Diego to climb up the top of Tepeyac and to cut cut the roses or the flowers that she, he would find growing there. And it was kind of strange because flowers didn't grow on the hillside in winter and even in summer there were only weeds and the craggy soil. So upon reaching the top, Juan was dazzled by the brilliant colors and perfume of bount bountiful array of Castilian roses. He cut them and he gathered and put them in his Maggie cactus and carefully carried them down to the hill to the lady and noticed that as our lady our lady arranged the flowers in his in the in the mantle this is important because the moment that mary touches the mantle the image is brought on the mantle because of her because she is the mediatrix of all grace all grace flows through her because she by her yes gives brought Jesus into the world, it should be so that 
by her touching his tilma it's transformed because she is the mother of all mankind and she transforms us we are like we are the roses who when uh, are in the in her tilma get transformed by her touch by her yes and our cooperation we become flowers of light as I will later show you the flower of light is on her tilma um, she represents the New Jerusalem so Mary arranged the flowers and that was important because if Mary had not touched that tilma it would not have the, the image would not have appeared on it it's because of her very touch of that tilma and arranging those flowers that um, that the tilma transforms her image so with his confidence restored Juan Diego set out for Bishop Zamoraga's palace he unfolded the tilma and the bishop was uh, stunned he fell to his knees from the roses but it was really the second thing that he saw the image which brought him to his knees was when he saw the image of Our Lady on the tilma and the bishop uh, Zumaraga prayed and begged Juan Diego to forgive him for not believing so the uh, bishop did go ahead and instruct uh, go ahead and have the temple built as Our Lady had requested on Tepeyac and it was interesting because Tepeyac used to be um, a place where the Aztecs used to offer sacrifices for um, you know offer uh, they used to have human sacrifices on Tepeyac so the, the indigenous people of of those days in Mexico were afraid of Tepeyac because they that's where the Aztecs used to make human sacrifices well with Mary appearing on Tepeyac to them it was like the dawning of a new era because um, their fear of Tepeyac was very very strong they had had so many problems with the Aztec Indians and um, if you know also they also had problems with the Spaniards at that time too uh, Hernando Cortez in Mexico was in contact with two very different ethnicities and cultures it was the Spaniards and those in indigenous to Mexico very poor people and Mary dressed like the poor people so um, she she was dressed like the in indigenous the poor people of Mexico to give them hope it was a dawning of a new era for them